Okay, here we have the big data applications analytics course. It's the motivation and overview uh, presentation. And I used to call it machine learning, big data in the cloud. It is now deep learning, big data in the cloud. Deep learning is overwhelmed, machine learning and, uh, and um, <coughs> powering a global AI supercomputer to take over the world. Meanwhile, they're all driving the current and future economy. So let's see how to go. This uh, particular lesson has two parts. <coughs> One is a sort of summary, just a listing of all the other parts, other lessons. And the last part of this uh, presentation is a short introduction to the cosmic principles of the world, or of this class at least. So let's, uh, let's go for it. Here we have the discussion of the topics in this course. It's a set of modules covering big data in different areas. There'll be two new modules, which I'm not going to discuss in detail, uh, because I haven't written them yet in detail. One on applications of deep learning, and the other on the technologies of the leading internet companies, such as, internet, such as Amazon and Google. Then we have the older, more traditional things. Physics, that was probably the first one I wrote, and is still stable. Uh, because physics changes slowly. It actually has the most data of any science problem at the moment, but um, its technology is not over, over is not um, changed that much by, say, deep learning, because although there's an enormous amount of data, the amount of data relevant to the Higgs boson is little data. So you're looking at needles in a haystack. The haystack is big, but the needles are small. Uh, we're not going to push the uh, recommender system discussion. It will just be available online. Uh, big data in sports, I think, is pretty accurate. Cloud computing, as I, as I just uh, updated this, this semester. Uh, big data use case service is still useful because it covers data in a variety of different fields, mainly science, but also industry. Sensors and edge systems is a bit out of, it's not. I mean, the field should be changing faster. It's not changing as fast as I expected. But um, it's, so it's not the greatest of, of, of modules. But the field itself is not in the greatest of shape because it's struggling to get started. Things like the industrial Internet of Things or and self-driving cars and things are still emerging. Radar processing, well, uh, that's no longer quite so exciting. In the way this presentation is a bit out of date. Same for web search and text mining. Dominant technology around 2012, but not. But now it still still makes lots of money for Google and people, but it's not uh, so exciting. Health informatics is actually emerging still, a bit frustrating, but it's so important. We all we really would like to keep alive, so we'll keep that in. And then we have a smattering of technologies where there is a real change. Technologies that should move from classic. Uh, data analysis technology such as clustering, regression, and things to deep learning. All right, that's the topics in the course. <clears throat> Here we have a short discussion of the mechanics of the class, uh, just copied from the online syllabus. We have four different names for the class, which are all cross listed and taught in the same fashion with the same lectures, sharing the same physical classes. Um, as described below, there's some differences in homeworks. If you want to see in detail immediately what it might look like, you just look at this uh, uh, PDF here, or EPUB, which is the same material in a different technology. And that's the complete record of last year's class. We have, we intend it to be somewhat shorter, the description this year, because the previous when we made these books, we put in extra material, which were not used in the class, but were related. Um, here we have the prototype of the book that will exist for this year's class. And it will have, it points to general modules, which uh, we might go through in some aspects of in some of the support lecturing, Python, Linux, and how to write in Markdown, which is what GitHub uses. There is a final project. Uh, due at the end of the class, there is some homework, which is typically essays um, and some software parts at the times. Uh, the final project is either software or essay. If you're a graduate student, you need to do software to get the highest grade. You can get a reasonable grade with 
an essay um, project. I say they all share the same lecture material, which is online, and they differ in homework and projects. Piazza is used for the communication that has a better interactive style than Canvas. And we're using, we're looking at applications of today's internet and cloud technology, uh, formulated as an intelligent cloud linked to an intelligent edge. This year we will have more on deep learning, and more on the technologies used in practice by Google and Facebook and Amazon, etc. And any software we use will be based on Python. Now that Python essay in the Google software TensorFlow can invoke sophisticated GPU and CPU software of different different languages. All right, now the next section is the summary of the contents of the lessons. <coughs> Here we have the overall introduction, which is what we're in at the moment. It's a summary and overall remarks. We've started with some overall remarks, and at the end of the summary, there'll be some more overall remarks. Then we have lesson 1A, and uh, it's on the technology hype cycle part one, which is some general features of hype cycles, and a some initial discussion of the 2019 emergency techno emerging technology hype cycle. And we also look at some general features of priority matrices, and um, again, discuss that in 2019. Uh, notice uh, that the hype cycles have been used in this class from the beginning, because they really capture technology and its changes. If we look at clouds and big data, they actually appeared right at the beginning, but then disappeared in 2014, and only appeared through uh, children, namely um, big data appeared through machine learning and data science, and, and clouds appeared through serverless and private clouds and platform as a service and AI platform as a service and things like that. They had uh, the core technology was viewed as uh, matured, going on the slope of it. So in uh, lesson 1b, it is um, details of 2019 and related type cycles, both emerging technology and related. 1c uh, used to, was effectively a summary of what was 1a last year, and it's um, got uh, hype cycles for 2018 through 2016. You will see more of that in the 2018 presentation. I've just selected some of that, because I'm trying to reduce the size. And you will also see in the same 2018 discussion, the discussion of the journey to a digital business, which was a feature in the 2015 Gartner report. Uh, 2018, uh, lesson 1A also discussed the 2017 data center infrastructure removed. But that was removed because, and you will find it in 2018, but not 2019, because the hype cycle disappeared. So it didn't seem useful to think about it. Uh, finally, on hype cycles, we have a very old set of hype cycles, really just there, 2008 to 2015, to show how cloud soared through the sky with various other transformational disruptive changes. Um, if you want to have more of this history, Unit 1B of the 2018 presentation has more of it. All right, we have um, Lesson 2A is the data deluge. As I've said many times, uh, well, maybe not many times so far, but you will find it later on as well. Um, actually, the, the, most, the best examples of the data deluge are rather old because people Produce this wonderful data to demonstrate it, and incredibly pretty pictures, but they did not update them as it became clear that everybody agreed there was a data deluge and big data was important. So I've left some of those old examples in because I can't find uh, comparable updates. So they make the right points, they just, the numbers are all wrong. Also, we've noticed the big data deluge is a deep learning deluge. And big data is agreed, and deep learning is evolving fast, but it may not be agreed as dominant, but it certainly, is a, certainly has a long, long, long number of successes. Then 2B is on uh, applications, part two, instead of general big data applications in 2A, it's clouds in science, or big data in science. And there we are called the cyber infrastructure. Again, we've removed material here. 
uh, so-called usage pattern from this discussion is removed, and you look at le lectures 2B in 2018 to find that. Uh, finally, we have some cloud and big data usage trends, um, and also some discussion of AI in uh, lesson 2C. Lesson three is jobs, data science, cloud jobs, computer science jobs, computer engineering, data engineering, and so on. There are lots of jobs. Look, it's not actually quite clear what the right job category to be in is, because they all have openings, but what are the best and best paid openings and the most rewarding is not totally clear. Then we have some global trends or industry technology and consumers. And uh, if you go to lectures 4A and 4B in 2018, you'll see more detail. And if you go to 2018 4C, you will see a discussion from 2016 of voice as an interface, cars, auto, auto, autonomous cars, and deep learning. We just removed it. As it's something, anything from 2016 is out of date. Uh, 05 is. Um, what did, what did we destroy while we marched forward? Like shoving mouths and things like that. Digital disruption. And again, you can go to lecture five of 2018 for more details. Um, <clears throat> now we go to the computing model, lesson 6A, which is all about clouds, which are now a dominant force. And we give examples and, and reasons why it's popular. Uh, lecture, computing. Model two um, is removed, um, and you have to see the 2018 presentation for developments, uh, discussions from Gartner after 2014, cloud market share, and blockchain. They're just removed. We still have a short discussion of some of these, these features, but the detailed discussion is removed. We have to cut the size down, or we'll never get through it. Lecture seven, research model. The fourth paradigm, so it's uh, observation, theory, computation, data science, or data driven, or data intensive. <coughs> then we go to the so what I call the data science pipeline, the fact that we go from data, to information, to knowledge, to wisdom, D-I-K-W. And that wisdom leads to decisions. And then there's a little discussion of data science platforms, but there's more of that in 2018. Uh, then we finally get on to some of the meat. Lecture nine is physics, which is looking for the Higgs particle with a, a Large Hadron Collider, LHC. It's actually probably the oldest module, but it's still up to date because the Higgs is the Higgs. The methods used to find it haven't changed dramatically. And actually, it's not terribly sensitive to big data technologies because the Higgs was discovered with little data. Little data extracted as a needle from big data. So it was needle finding. But rather, by, because everything is, everything for this problem is full of mathematics, you can use the mathematics, the values of properties to, to actually extract these needles. Recommender systems, uh, lecture 10, first part, which is a Netflix example. Uh, lesson 11 is the second part of uh, recommender systems. More about overall concepts like data bags and the spaces, abstract spaces you use to analyze this data. Lecture 12 is the topic which I later on have removed as uh, deprecated as being a little old fashioned. <coughs> Web search and information retrieval, but we summarize it here. Uh, 13, lecture 13 is cloud applications and research, but that's removed. You have to go and find lecture 13 in 2017, which is identical to the 2018. I didn't update it. Uh, lecture 14 is uh, still there. It's on parallel computing and map reduce and software ecosystems. Lecture 15 is removed. You have to go to 2017. It was even removed in 2018 uh, when this was even far too big. But I still removed it and still made, made 2018 far too big. Online education. I used the one love online education. Now I'm not so loving it. 
uh, we can discuss that if you like. Finally, we have conclusions. Everything has to have a conclusion. So that's the conclusions at the end, and it's a very short section. Now we just make a few remarks on general issues driving the course material or the, the developments that the course describes. Um, then we'll get on with the detailed lessons 1, 1A through 16. So if we look at the impact big data, there, there is more and more data on everything. Shopping, social networking, smartphones, smart homes, ubiquitous cities, smart power grids, intelligent vehicles, and they're all full of sensors, the Internet of Things, recording even more. Science is getting data, often with quite large devices, like the Large Hadron Collider is big. Satellites are relatively big, and all accelerators are quite big. Gene, gene sequencers are sort of medium size. And then we're going to send all that data to clouds with co-located storage and computing that perform analytics on the data and transfer the data into information and then to wisdom and decisions. Data mining finds the knowledge diamonds and the data rough. And this disruptive approach is driving the economy, creating lots of jobs in the field of data science and the computer engineering that supports it. And we're discussing this revolution and its implications for universities and society. For students, you must become digitally and data aware. Essentially, all good jobs today require that. And you also better be digitally and data flexible, because it's all changing. And you need to get yourself some intuition. Look at examples, get intuition. People, you shouldn't believe everything you, that the uh, computer tells you. Because uh, anyway, this digital data approach is changing everything. You need to understand how to make the best use of it. So the data deluge is clear. That's a well-established trend. It really doesn't, it, we have a lesson on it, but it's well-established. We have chips that are doing the computing that's uh, uh, getting information out of this data. These are multi-core, which gives us more computer. And they're on shared servers, five, maybe, it's only five to 10 million of them. And, um, we have smaller, lightweight clients from smartphones, tablets, to sensors. And we have clouds with greener, cheaper features, and they're easier to use. And that's basically is powering information technologies. We're having new jobs um, with new curricula, where that might discuss clouds and data science and data engineering. And then we better learn how to use deep learning, which is very mathematical and rather rather abstruse. And uh, at least you should need to learn how to use it, or at least not get fooled by it. And um, that's the last uh, slide on this cosmic introduction. But remember, you must become digitally and data savvy. Thank you.